everyone. Welcome to Reach Higher Riverside, where we share all Reach Higher stories happening across the nation. My name is Priscilla Grijalva, and I am your Reach Higher Riverside podcast host. This month, we have an interview with Cher Kretz, who is a school counselor in Corona Norco Unified School District. She is also a solution-focused climate specialist and the podcast host for the podcast Parenting with the Focused Mindset. She will be sharing some great tips for our listeners. I hope you enjoy this interview. Hi, everyone. I'm with Cheryl Kretz. Um, she's an awesome school counselor in Corona Norco Unified School District. Can you tell us a little bit about yourself? My name is Cheryl Kretz. I go by Cher as well. And I've been a counselor for 17 years. Before that, I taught child development at Riverside Community College. And before that, I was a kindergarten teacher. And um, I have done all of my school counseling at um, Corona Norco Unified School District. So I was elementary, middle school high school, and then back to elementary. So uh-huh. I've done circle <laughs> through that. It all. Yeah, it's been full circle. And when I was high school, I was at Kennedy Middle, Middle College High School. So I kind of helped them get an AA plus, you know, their, their degree at the same time. So it was a really fun time. Since then, I've kind of uh, had a real heart to help parents and help families, because you know that as school counselors, we see so much need out there. And so uh, just, uh, gosh, I want to say, well, it was right after the pandemic started. I already had it all set up and I launched a podcast after I was inspired by yours a couple of months earlier. And I call it parenting with the focused mindset. And what I do is I seek to share solution focused strategies and mindset with families because being a solution focused specialist, I was trained in that. I was actually in the middle of the training when the pandemic started um, by Dr. Linda Medcalf and being trained officially in that and becoming a specialist has just absolutely transformed um, more than what I expected. Not only how I do my practice, but also a lot about my own mindset and my own life. So um, it's been really fun. It's been super rewarding. It's uh, Every single state in the United States and most countries in the world have listeners at this point. We just hit 15,000 downloads. It's just been really wow, fun. It's been really cool. It's been really, really fun to watch it grow over this period of time in my little world, just sharing solution focused strategies with families and bringing on amazing guests. Um, so that's kind of my passion right now is just helping families and um, helping more people have a mindset that can help them grow. So maybe you could tell our listeners a little bit about what solution-focused um, counseling is. Uh, maybe some of them don't know, and I think that would be helpful if you could share some of that information. Absolutely. You know, solution-focused brief therapy has been around for years, and um, it's, a, it's a therapy practice that has been studied and practiced, came actually originally, I believe, from Finland. And it's a type of therapy that's now morphed into a mindset that many people use in schools in many situations because you can talk to someone and it's it's a lot shorter. Like in the, a long time ago, um, we know a lot about behavioral therapy and these type of things would be long drawn out sessions of therapy. And if that therapy didn't work, well, let's bring the parents in and now let's have long drawn sessions with them. Well, that doesn't work so well as well when you're a school counselor, because that's not our role. Yeah, you know, our role we're is, is no, we're not therapists, but we're in all of these situations where we want to be helpful. So a solution focused mindset says not just that we're looking for solutions, but that we listen for solution talk and lean into it when we're talking to people, that we look for ways that they're shining and then highlight the way that they're shining in order for them to see the wonderfulness within them, in order for them to unlock a potential that they never knew they had. And it also works well with um, also squishing problem talk because we it's a it's a type of pro where like, okay, if you're, you're trained, if you hear problem talk, you don't lean into that and go into that saga. Now, basically the basic idea of solution focused uh, is that you're going to meet someone 
You're going to acknowledge what they've been through and listen to their story. Absolutely. But then you're going to ask them a question like, if this problem didn't exist, what would, what, what difference would that make in your life? How would it be different? What would be different exactly? And help them to get a clear picture on this other version of themselves, this better version that's locked inside of them. And then right giving them permission to unlock that. It doesn't even take that long. And it's, it's a, um, a quick process, but I found a lot of success in my work. And then I found a lot of success with coaching as well, using the exact same formula of solution focused, um, founded in solution focused brief therapy, but now brought into the schools. It's more like a solution focused mindset. Yeah, that's so awesome. I love that. Can you give an example of maybe something that you did with the student using that solution focused mindset? Maybe a situation Absolutely. or something that a student had talked to you about. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, now that I do it on, you know, 90% of the times when I meet, um, I, there's some that stick out in your mind, you know? Right. And, uh, I remember there was a child way, way back when I was actually still in the training for solution focus, it was right as the pandemic, before the pandemic went out and a teacher came to me and said, this child never talks fourth grade student boy. And he has a completely straight affleck at his face. He, de- he doesn't even make facial expressions. And the speech therapist actually was the first one that came to me and said, I don't know. I've been seeing him since first grade. I think he's just stubborn. The parents are planning on stopping the IEP, but I don't know what to do because he never talks. And so uh, she goes, I think it might be selective mute. So um, I went on into the classroom, observed for a little while. And sure enough, I, I pointed it out. I was like, I bet you that's the one right over there. Right. And then sure enough, the teacher told me. So I, um, I took the child out and we walked silently over to the office. And then we went into the office and anybody who's listening to the school counselor and have worked with a selective mute, there's a lot of silence (laughs) because they don't want to talk. So, um, you know, I, I was patient, but I was like, I just kind of waited it out. And this one was a tough nut to crack because you're thinking, how can I even see what his best wishes are and his best hopes if he won't even open his mouth to talk? So pretty soon, um, I decided, you know, meet him where he's at. That's what we always can go back to. And you and I talked about that a little while ago, meet the child where they're at. And so I just said, you know what? You love being quiet, don't you? That's just something that you love to that just, you're just comfortable being quiet. I said, you must always be quiet, right? Is that just, are you, is there always a time? Is there ever a time? I don't know that, you know, I kind of like just wondered about that. And then I just kind of sat and wondered, and then he kind of nodded no. Cause I said, are you always quiet? And I said, wow, really? Well, when are you not as quiet? And he thought about it for a minute. He really didn't want to tell me. And then he's like, when I play my video game. And I said, oh, I said, really? Well, Mike, what do you, what is it about your video game? What kind of things are you talking about when you play your video game? And he says, well, I rule that game. I said, oh, how do you rule that game? And he says, well, I dominate. I'm really good at that game. In fact, they call me King. He said, my name is King on that game. And I have a clan and I have a group and we built, and then he started babbling a little bit, a little tiny bit in a quiet voice about his game. And in solution focused realm, you know, um, it could have been very easy if I was thinking about being in my own head of what I think is right or wrong to fall into at that point being like, well, you shouldn't be on a video game as much. And you know, now that we're in a classroom, the classroom doesn't work like that. And if you talk to more, maybe you can make friends. No, 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 no. Shut the mouth. All right. Just shut it. Like we talk way too much in counseling. Sometimes it's not meant for that. And so I just leaned in to each of those things that were working for him. And I said, well, um, pretty soon after he spoke a little bit, I said, I wonder, I'm just wondering here. I wonder what would happen if your avatar king was in your classroom. If you were that person, if you were that same person that you are in your video in your classroom, what would be different about that? And he said, well, probably I'd have more friends. And I said, well, what difference would that make for you if you made more friends? And he said, well, maybe I wouldn't frown so much because people would know who I was and they might like me. And I said, huh? 
I said, well, you frown a lot. Well, what do you think that you could do to be a little more like your avatar? And he said, well, maybe I could try smiling. Mind you, the teacher had never seen him smile, not even once. And so um, I said, well, I wonder if you could try that tomorrow. Let's see if you could smile. Who do you think would notice if you smiled? He said, no one's going to notice. The teacher doesn't notice. I mean, now she just walks past me. She doesn't even talk to me because she knows I'm not going to talk. So she doesn't talk to me. And I said, well, I don't know. Give it a shot. See what happens. Just maybe try smiling tomorrow. And he <laughs> said, all right, all right, I'll try. He said, but they're not going to notice. And so the next day was Friday and it was raining and, uh, and it was pouring, pouring rain. And um, the teacher comes running through the rain. No. Uh, no umbrella. And she's like, Mrs. Kretz, Mrs. Kretz, wait, wait, wait. She Hi. came up to me. She had tears in her eyes. She said, I want to tell you, he smiled. And I won't Aww. say his name. But she said he smiled. And she's all he has the most beautiful smile. And I was like, well, that was pre masked, you know, but um, <laughs> yeah, and, <laughs> and I was just and her and I both were just standing there in the rain with teary eyed because that was a breakthrough, you know, right. for him, that was the breakthrough he needed to move forward with a huge hurdle that he had in his life. And so, uh, so I went to him in his office and I said, what happened? He goes, Miss Kretz, I smiled. And I said, what happened? She noticed because I had gone and tell her, Hey, if you notice anything different, tell him. And she's like, okay, I will, you know? Yeah. And I, I said, she noticed. And he, I said, wow, how did that make you feel? What do you think you might do? He goes, I think I might try talking to some people. And I'm like, oh, wow, uh -huh. that would be amazing. Right. Right. And that was the day that I went back to my office and read the email that we were going out for COVID. Wow. So that day was like replaying in my mind, you know, like I never, I didn't see him again until we came back, you know, and just, it just burned in my heart to see that little change. It wasn't the first time I'd seen an amazing change from a solution focused line of speaking, but it was the one that just said, wow, I, this is the work that this is the type of counselor that I want to be. I want to be the type of counselor that unlocks their potential through what's already inside of them. You know, yeah. that he, he was already that person. He just wasn't showing it to our school. So uh, showing them their potential and moving forward, not focusing right. on the past. That, that's so important. Yeah. I love that. Maybe you could tell me how you got so into solution focused and how come it's like such a passion of yours. Can you tell me about that? Well, when I was a junior high counselor, actually, um, I started kind of realizing that there were some things I always do, some things I always say as a counselor, like let's make the next right choice and things. But I thought, you know, I, I was just then transitioning from high school over to junior high. And I just was in that mood. You know what I mean? Like, I just need to get some training. I just need to do training. So I was looking for different trainings out there. I saw a few different ones. And um, then when I was at one of our conferences, I sat with several other people in, in our district in a training for solution focused. And it was just a conference training. And it just like everything they were saying was like, yeah, yeah, that's what I need to do. But I didn't know how to get trained. So I just started, you know, giving myself a YouTube university and just like looking everywhere and trying to find ways to start to practice solution focused. And at the time, as you know, Anita Shirley was uh, the head of our department. And I remember when she came to do my observation, I was like, I'm going to do solution focused counseling for you when you come, I'm going to have, I'm going to do something totally different. And I'm going to have the kids come in and you can watch how I do it. And it was like totally outside my comfort zone, but that's how we stay fresh. You know, like, right. uh, you know, I've been a counselor a long time and I'm sure a lot of your listeners, you know, we've been doing this sometimes a long time and it's in order to ignite the fire within you, you know, look for some new strategies, learn them. You never know what could happen. And yeah. then the district, uh, sent out an email or something that the California teachers association was having a training by Dr. Linda Medcalf on solution to become a solution focused specialist. And so I put in a proposal and they did it and that's, and the rest was history really. Yeah. I love that. And it's so true. Like when we continue to learn and meet people that are passionate about school counseling, like us, like it helps motivate us to do better and learn more and like really shows in our work. Um, like I was just having this conversation with one of my friends um, the other day, he serves on like national committees and all this stuff. He's amazing. But he's like, he was like, one of the reasons he does that is because he gets to meet so many amazing people and it inspires him to continue to do the work and, and do better. 
Yeah. I mean, if we really believe that we're a lifelong learner, then we've got to practice it ourselves. Yes. And that you are definitely doing. And I'm so glad that you are impacting so many lives out there. Um, what is your favorite part about being a school counselor? My favorite part about being school counselor is those moments that happen. I mean, I love the big picture stuff and talking in, in big on, on big arenas. I do videos for the school. But the moment that I just spoke to you about, the little moments that you have with kids where you see the little breakthroughs, it's like every time that happens, it's like, that's why I do this. That's why I do this, you know? And it's the same way, even with parents. I'll call parents now. I'm in a lot more of a practice, especially since doing a parenting podcast that yeah. I, uh, I call the parents even more than I used to. And then it's like, almost like I can hear it in their voice and they'll be like, okay, I got this. I can try something new. I can do it. And you're just like, yes, let's do this. We can all, you know, like level up around here, yeah. you know, let's do this. It's a team effort. Like, it's the little know. moments. Yeah, it really is. It was the same way for high school too. I remember that it was a lot of work to, to help a child get from, you know, where they're at to walking them, uh, watching them walk across the stage. Um, but it was walking across the stage, the moment of them, that it was just be like, oh, you know, like, yeah. it's like, this is what we've been doing this whole time. And you just feel kind of like, uh, so great, you know, those it little is. Eyes. Yeah, especially when the student feels like no one believes in them and you're like, yeah, you got this, you can do it. Yes. And they turn everything around, and you see them walk across that stage and it's just like, oh, oh. it's nothing like it. Yeah, it melts your heart. <sighs> um, yeah. One of the things that I did want to ask you was um, based on your experience and everything that's going on right now with the global pandemic, can you share something that maybe you're seeing with students that um, can help educators? as they're dealing, um, obviously you shared a lot of great resources, but is there anything else that you're seeing that would be helpful for our listeners? I do think that I was sitting down with a group of um, third grade teachers just last week and just kind of giving them an open forum. And I had them echo what I've seen and heard all over the place. And even when I talk to people in other schools is that children um, were affected, but they're so resilient, but it's important for us to understand that we are all helping these kids move to, uh, uh, the level that they always, what's, what's in their heart that they know that they can do, but it's taxing, but we're in this together. You know, each teacher was saying, I just don't know, because these kids, they, they, they tattle more than they should. They're, you know, arguing more than they should. They seem so self-centered. They seem like, all they want is what they want. And it's because they sat at home for so long and they weren't challenged in their thoughts and behavior socially. And I think what we need to remember as a collective whole in education is that we've been charged. This is our time. This is our time to shine. We get to lean in and yes, it's been hard, but now that we see where our kids are at, that's us that get to help make that change. We're the ones that get to make the difference and say, you know what, let me teach you some of those social skills. Let me teach you a little bit more about how it works when you have to give and also get advice or not be the main one talking in a classroom. Now we're letting other people try. Yes, they should have already learned it, but you know what? They didn't. And now we get to. And if we looked at it more like that, we get to walk into their life and make a difference, I think all of us are going to be able to walk through, um, it, continue to walk through this challenge and get to the other side with success. Yeah. Having that growth mindset, not, yeah. I have to, but I get to, right. Right. So right. Yeah. But it's hard when you have a lot of the kids that are struggling with things that you're normally not having to deal with. And that's what the teachers are facing. You know, they're like, I shouldn't have even be dealing with this. Well, we are. <laughs> yeah. And I think even the school counselors, like we're dealing with a lot of mental health issues and then trying mm -hmm. to balance everything else. Um, it's a lot on our plate. Um, yeah. So it's, it's been quite a challenge. Um, Hasn't it though? Oh my goodness gracious. Yeah. But um, I'm very grateful that we do have school counselors. That's so important. And um, we're able to help students, you know, with their mental health and college career and academic success, all of the main yeah. domains in our national standards. Now, I know that I'm preaching to the choir, but I also do believe in filling yourself back up, like I mentioned, and 
podcasts are a great way to do it. I mean, it's kind of silly when so these people, you guys are all listening to a podcast. So clearly <laughs> you've got this, but yeah. I feel as though it's like an untapped source that can just fill you up. You know, you find a podcast that you can learn something, a little nugget, hear a story, you know, and um, and basically any subject that you're interested in, whether it be from knitting to education, to parenting, to joking, you can just plug in and unwind. And I think that more educators need to use the, the resources that we have just to educate ourselves and also just give ourselves self-care, you know, give yourself some time to yeah. be that lifelong lear long learner. We can't just be giving, giving, giving. We need to put some back in to ourselves. Yeah, that's so important. And like, you can even maybe take a jog and listen to a podcast or while you're cleaning your house, you could yeah. do a podcast. There's so many things you can do with a podcast. I um, totally agree. But as a school counselor, it's so important. I know Dr. Stone, um, she's the ASCA ethics chair for our national association. She always says, consult, 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 which as school counselors, we need to do that. So true. But I also believe um, we also need to advocate, advocate, advocate for our school counseling profession, um, not just um, during National School Counseling Week, but throughout the school year, sharing data, sharing the amazing things that you're doing, Cher, and um, all the school counselors. That's also why I love doing podcasts, because we get to highlight amazing people like you. Thank um, you. It's <laughs> such a, I've been so looking forward to being on your podcast, because I listened to it, so I was so oh, excited. Well, thank you. Um, at the end of our podcast, we like to do the Sunshine Spotlight. Can you tell me at least one thing that's made you happy this week? Oh, my goodness. One thing that has made me happy this week, besides being on this podcast, that's a good one. I'm totally <laughs> excited about it. And plus, we're just at the beginning of the week. So, you know, uh, in the last yeah. seven days, though, I would say um, I've been able to get out in the sunshine a lot. Our, our, we've been finally feeling that sunshine, and I've done a couple of little mini hikes. And I have to say that it's outside of work, but it's filled me up. You know, we just, we gotta, we gotta get outside more often, yes, you know? you. but, and that, and really, I, I do have to say that I feel like this is a special moment and I really appreciate, um, us being diligent to make sure this happens because it's so important that we come together, like you said, and, um, celebrate each other and get to know each other. And thank you so much for having me on your show. Yeah, no problem. Definitely one of my highlights for my Sunshine Spotlight was meeting you um, and doing this podcast interview. And maybe you could also, before we sign off, can you tell everyone where they can find your podcast? Yeah, it's called Parenting with the Focused Mindset. And some people just put in the Focused Mindset and it pops up um, Parenting with the, and then it pops up, you know, okay, so it's but, on all, um, all platforms it's on all, yeah, it's on all the platforms. They can also go to my website, thefocusedmindset.com. I always give away solution focused. I give away solution focused lesson plans, ideas. Um, anyone that wants to join the focused mindset community, it's just basically where every single month I send off solution focused activities that people can do either in their home or with their students. Um, you can find that on my website, thefocusedmindset.com. And then I'm going to be starting a Friday in a couple of months. I'm gearing up to do a texting community where I'll do a focused Friday motivational push for all of us to get through the week and go into the weekend. Um, you know, just we're all in this together, you know, yeah. and I want to be able for us to really feel like we are doing that. You'll see that it's under share Kretz, because that's what I put my podcast under my nickname oh, share. That's awesome. And, uh, and I'd love to have you guys, I'd love to share listeners with this podcast and that one. And maybe one day we'll all just meet together and have a big party. Yeah. Well, thank you so much for being on our podcast. Um, it was an honor to have you on here. Um, and I hope you have a great week. Say goodbye. You too. Bye bye. Cher has a solution focused education pack she is offering for free that includes two solution focused activities for educators that they can use with students. You can check out the following link for more information www.thefocusedmindset.com backslash reach her riverside or email her at share c h e r at the focused mindset. Thank you, everyone. Thank you for tuning in to Reach Higher Riverside. You can follow us on Twitter at RH Riverside. You can subscribe to our YouTube channel at Reach Higher Riverside. You can also subscribe to our iTunes or Google Play Music and give us a rating. Thank you so much for listening in. We appreciate all of you tuning in. And as Michelle Obama would say, when they go low, we reach higher.